Yo guys, this is Aaron Roach Bridgman and I'm starting something new called Hashtag Roach Real Talk. This is a conversation series where I'm going to be speaking to some of your favourite entertainers, music artists, all different types of people who we know and love, but it's different. We're going to be getting to know the human being behind the talent and having mature conversations as we all get older and reach towards real adulthood. Let's find out some of the things that are happening in life that are shaping who we are now as we approach proper adulthood. This is hashtag Roach Real Talk. Let me tell you about it on the way. So you know what it is, it's Roach Real Talk right now and I'm graced to have the presence of someone who's very important. Born in Birmingham, raised in Tottenham, North London. The creator of some of my favorite phrases in grime and probably music overall. Phrases like, back it in my face. I can't believe he's come back it in my face. Phrases like, <laughs> there's so many. Kill off Kelly, the famous one. But also, beginning of the game. Enough of these MC guys wanna be bigger than the game. And probably one of my favorites of all, is enough of these MCs look like toasted ham on cheese. Look in their pocket, they ain't got enough for a toasted ham on cheese. Yeah, this guy is a living legend, a grime general. Formerly known to us as President T, but we now refer to him as Prez T. My brother, thank you for being here, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, you know, in keeping with your lyrics, yeah. one lyric I remember you said back in the day as well was, little did you know, I was spitting from way before he was born. Yeah. And, I've, and I, know, I know some of your history and I know that even before you touched the mic for yeah. Grime or Garage, yeah. you started in drum and bass and jungle. Oh, right, yeah. Late 90s, you joined a crew in Manchester called Dark Side Crew. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Is that where the connection with Manchester happened for you or was it before that? Um, the connection with Manchester actually happened before that because my, my aunt and my relatives are from up there. Okay. So um, I always was going to Manchester as a child way before the Dark Side Crew thing. Okay. But that's when I moved up there for other reasons and uh, yeah it just blew up since then how's the journey been like is, do you think that some, that spitting and i guess being a being a mic man is something that you were meant to do well in a sense yeah seeing as um you know it came like from a trait so my uh, mother was in the music industry and so was my father so then I, it was kind of like it was passed down to me so um the skill and the the, uh, the stage presence i would say uh, there was never um, short of a song getting sung in my household growing up mm. so yeah and it's interesting you speak about your mum and dad because I know that your mum was a singer and your dad was a mic man in a, tra in a traditional sense yes yeah a sound man <laughs> a sound man exactly sound system yeah. yeah um what were they like on stage and were they I guess direct inspirations on your Kill Off Kelly stage swag that you created later on yeah I kind of looked at it in a way where it's like certain set amount of people are supposed to be entertainers mm. someone's got to do it in that aspect mm -hmm. and that's how I feel about myself mm -hmm. I took it um, I took it off them and when they was on stage or I saw them perform as a child there was not one bit of stage fright in them at all so Crazy. yeah I kind of took that on myself you know cool, I pretend man. no one's there yeah know? yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the same thing that we I, I do to now yeah it kind of like it helps you to kind of just get into your zone yeah. yeah and I know as well musically what I was quite surprised to find out is that you consider Tupac one of your biggest musical inspirations. Absolutely. What was it about Tupac and I guess the way that he made music that inspired you? Just um, mainly his passion for it mm. and um, his drive what made him led to say certain things and put it in music mm. to get a wider message across because mm. that's what it's really all about. You're either making music to fill your pocket, enjoy the sound or get a wider message across. And um, I would say that I made my music with trying to get a wider message to the wider audience, mm. basically, not just the people that um, are out in the clubs. Mm. And I feel like people slept on that maybe in the early days, because one thing that I always remember about you, even from when I was young listening to you, is that even though you deliver it in a whimsical way, you deliver it in a way to kind of like almost entertaining yeah. but listen to what a man is saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like come even on, the toasted ham on. and cheese thing it's like man had to really like one my friend rest in peace he's not here no more that's one of his favorite bars is because he was like he was used to break it down to a science he's like listen to what prez is saying though mm. he said man i got the wrong priorities yeah yeah you get yeah me? all mixed up yeah all mixed up do you feel like people really took in just the depth of what you were trying to communicate to them from when you started this um some some and i would 
I would give that to the people that were on the other side of the computer screen from back then, mm. or people that were far away or weren't really involved in the London grime scene or the London UK urban scene at the time. So um, yeah, and there, a lot of my fans today have been there for over ten years. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I've managed to keep. You know what I mean? Mm. Another thing I was surprised to find out about you is that apparently before you were full time music, mm. you used to be a professional, uh, a semi professional footballer. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that because I was oh. surprised. Not that you don't look like a baller, oh, but no, I was no, surprised no. to find out that man was a semi-pro Yeah, no, no. It was um, a long time ago when I was living up in the West Midlands with my grandma and um, um, sadly she passed away not too long after that. But um, yeah, I um, started off with Tamworth. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, I kind of got the link from my aunt who lived in the West Midlands. Her neighbour was already a first team player for Tamworth okay. FC. And so he took me training and that. Uh, and then he took me to the um, Aston Villa training. Um, under under 18 something okay. like that and so that's how I got into it and then yeah it just kind of went uphill from then yeah. but then it quickly went downhill because <laughs> then my nan passed away oh, and I yeah. kind of had to move back to down south and I got involved with the wrong crowd yeah, yeah, yeah. etc but yeah for a hot minute I was like I was red hot on the ball what position midfield right wing yeah yeah, yeah and you yeah. said that with some real conviction like yeah, like yeah. the way you said that with conviction i'm like yo press is not playing around yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. he was flinging the ball into yeah, yeah, me yeah, 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 yeah. you still play now um no not, not at really. all man not, not at all, all. yeah my attachment with football has like it hasn't been there for a long time um I've had other things, family, children and stuff and things like that. So yeah, but you know, a lot of my close friends that weren't into it as much as me are now more into it yeah. as a fan side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's a bit up and down. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm still an Aston Villa supporter though. Okay, that's different. Yeah. They got, they got the villa though, they got the villa. Yeah, yeah. They got the villa. I like, uh, but I got, I got, I got, a, I got an affinity with Birmingham because I lived down there for like four years. So okay, okay. Like, yeah. I, won't, I won't have a bad word said against Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0121 yeah, yeah. to the death of me yeah. as well. You get yeah, me? yeah, come but, on. Um, moving forward with your journey, man, like, another thing I wanted to speak about was um, Meridian, man. Yeah. Like, so important as a grind crew and very important as well as an area in Tottenham, North London. Yeah. Take me back to those beginnings and the story of how it all was and how it began. Okay, well, yeah, I'll break it down. Basically, you've got Selby, which is another estate, which next door to Meridian. So before Meridian was built, there was Selby. Okay. Um, so basically, when uh, Meridian came along and they built Meridian up as an estate back in the mid 90s, mm -hmm. I would say, um, a lot of people that lived around the Selby area moved into Meridian um, and the journey was us lot on the block as youths um, not everyone had jobs some people had jobs that you know for short time spans and then but we was basically on the street um, with no direction and music was the only direction that we could follow or the only path that we could take and we took it we took it built it up um, at the time East London kind of had the urban game on smash and so we was probably the only clique or collective from north london to get our sound across to east and then from east it was all over mm -hmm. so yeah credit to east man you yeah, you lot had it happening around here still yeah. yeah and then meridian for people that don't know just explain some of the members who uh, i guess came from meridian alongside yourself yeah oh um basically yeah so myself paper pabs h my younger brothers um, Skepta, JME, Meridian Dan, and there was a few others that, you know, um, came, came, and, came and went. Yeah. No names. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, yeah, initially it was uh, myself, Bossman Birdie, yeah, boss. Paper Pabs, H, Meridian Dan, Skepta, JME, and, uh, and DJ at the time, or Skepta was DJing at the time, yeah. but he was also an MC. So, um, yeah. There was another guy there called Lieutenant as well. Okay. Who, um, you know, you didn't have to spit or do anything. If you was part of the team, you was part, part of the team. Part of the team, yes, that goes. So, um, yeah, 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 that was the original collective. And um, obviously, we all went down our separate paths. Yeah. But from that little suburb of an estate in the borough of Harringay, which is in Tottenham, it's yeah. just, you know what I mean? It's amazing. Taking over the world, basically. Yeah, man, it's amazing, bro. Yeah. And one thing that I always think about when I think about those days as well is pirate radio. I think about Axe FM. I've got a set from Axe FM with you and Scorcher that must be about 15 years old. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I miss those oh, yeah. sets. I miss oh, yeah. those times. I miss back to back. Yeah. Um, so even like 
Scorcher. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you remember Cookie either. Yeah, 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 I remember. But Scorcher and Cookie, when they was young in a crew called Cold Blooded. Cold Blooded, yep. You know, and they would, you know, if they're going to be true to themselves, they'll tell you. But it was me that brought man to the forefront. Okay. It was me that brought them across the sceptre and listen, these guys are deep, blah, blah, they're blah. Younger, they're yeah, up, yeah, so, but you, you know, even Solo 4 or 5, yeah, a prime yeah, example. Yeah. Um, it's a bit controversial now yeah. to bring that up, you know, for what's going on in the media. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, when, even when he was younger, and people, a lot of people from the area came to me mm-hmm. to bring them to the forefront, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. So you were a little bit of like a, I guess like a like a Alex Ferguson, so to speak. Like you kind of like, you kind of gave the um, a, a lot of young bucks their chance. Yeah, kind of, kind of. I could kind of see the way the game was going. I mm. could kind of, I understood it wasn't what you, what you was emceeing about or rapping about. It was basically how you can get it across. Yeah. And back in them times, you know, for urban music, it was pretty um, scarce to get your hands on stuff. Mm-hmm. I remember being younger, me and my brother we used to tape. Westwood shows and stuff, so the um, the reach or the outlets was minimal. Mm. So um, yeah, I'm glad that um, I was able to get to a stage where I could maximise that for the fans. Mm. Like old um, Shabra and Skipper for prime example, when yeah. they first, you know, it was even more minimal to get True. music from their side. Yeah. So you had to go to the rave or mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, get the tape pack. You had to be visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And going on from that, um, one thing. That I saw happen is a uh, bloodline came about. Now, yeah. Big H, yourself, yeah. um, uh, Boss Man Birdie, yeah. who's one of my people, um, Paper Pabs, who's my guy. I love Pabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Nine Milli Major came later on as well. Yeah, yeah. All you guys were bloodline, and I, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you were called bloodline because you were all related. Is that correct? Yes, in a sense, the, the initially started off as um, President T, Paper Pabs, Big H. Bossman Birdie is our blood cousin, Major's our cousin as well, so it all kind of, it was a blood thing, but that never meant that if you weren't blood, you couldn't be in. And you couldn't be in, yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah. And another thing that I was thinking about when I thought about that is that you, H, and Pabs, all brothers, yeah. all grew up together, mm-hmm. but you managed to create distinctively three unique and very individual spitting styles. Yeah. And I thought, well, how is that possible? Because you know, usually when people are brothers, they kind of yeah. sound similar. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. did that yeah, uniqueness yeah, yeah. come yeah. about, even though you grew together? Um, probably down to the, you know, because we're all different ages, mm. the um, choice of a group of friends that we rolled with in school, mm. if you know what I mean. Because obviously, I weren't going to roll with no one younger than me. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, and vice versa. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's what, and you kind of shape your own personality as a man mm. the older you get. So, you're all similar in your ways, but you've got your, your individual at the same time. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's what I think. That's um, but there, there are similarities I would say in mine and H's style, mm-hmm. and uh, similarities in mine and Pabs's voice at times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in the voice. Yeah. But I feel like Pabs has always kind of more resonated with rap. Yes. As opposed to yeah. to yeah, rhyme. Yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe that's yeah. where the differentiation came. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Um, some man ain't really weren't really into the old school underground dance music side of what we're all involved in now mm-hmm. um, and a lot of men don't realise there would be no platform for you to rap in the UK and talk all your wickedness <laughs> if it wasn't for the dance music industry bringing it to the table 100% and that's fair for me to say man anyone that d- disagrees with me then so be it but you know no I agree 100% um, another interesting uh, thing that you've said was that your biggest up was when Meridian managed to build themselves up to the point where they were one of Grimes' biggest crews. Yeah. And you said one of your biggest downs was when it split into two. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing is, even though it split into two, you guys have always remained very cool. There's never been really any issue there. Yeah. So I guess fundamental fans really think, yeah. well, why did they even split then? It was down to circumstance, really, change of circumstance. So therefore, obviously, an incident in Meridian took place mm-hmm. where, where, you know, someone, uh, there was a shooting. Yeah, I remember. And um, everyone moved to different areas and different parts okay. of the country for okay. that period of time. And so, but still, we all carry, we all wanted to carry on with our music. Okay. And I just think we went down our own garden paths, really. Mm-hmm. Um, it, nothing was personal. 
nothing was done on purpose or intentional. Even though at the time, certain members had um, issues with other members as well. For me personally now, it couldn't be no better. But um, we as a crew and a collective, if we would have stuck together, who knows the heights we could have climbed but by now, if you know what I mean, so yeah, to be honest. But I think it's still good to see that collaborations still happen. Um, you guys still collaborate on music certain times and like I said the vibe still seems to be good because you know sometimes we see the splits in, in it's, it's not a new thing it's happened loads over the years but one thing that I do respect about the way that you guys have gone about your business is that yeah we split but it doesn't mean that we're not friends yeah it, yeah of course it doesn't not. mean we can't collaborate no, of course and not, I think yeah. that shows the maturity of, of you guys not. as yeah. a collective yeah. or maybe it shows the yeah. tightness that you had I guess originally being from the same estate as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. yeah yeah because at the end of the day besides all the screens and all the um, stages we're family mm -hmm. at the end of the day. We treat each other like family. And um, you've always got to have that respect there for another human. 100%. Full stop, so that's what I believe in, really. One thing I do miss with the scene is crews. I feel like, I feel like a, maybe a lot of artists don't feel like we even need them anymore. But I do miss crews. I miss when like you knew, okay, Meridian's gonna be on the set. Yeah. They're gonna go back to back with I don't know, with with Roll Deep or yeah. whatever it yeah. might be. Yeah. I, I do miss when because like, it, it, there was a kind of excitement there. Because yeah. and also why it was good as well because I, I guess everyone had their favorite MC. Yeah, yeah. Why do you yeah. think the um the need for crews or maybe even the want to be in crews is not as plentiful as it is? Because not everyone's got bars. <laughs> and, and, no, and, and that's and that's and, no, and that is the god's only yeah, yeah, truth yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, to get involved in this thing, you had to have bars pre-written yeah. or something to bring to the table of a certain level of intelligence so it can filter itself down to. Yeah being good music on yeah. the radio. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now, you don't need to have any bars. Yeah, you yeah. can specifically write a set amount of bars for that instrumental. True. And it can go places. True. So, you know, half of these, a lot of new rappers, the idea of them going on a set with 10 other killer sprayers Scary. is their biggest nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've seen it happen myself. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that's the, probably the only reason I could think of why yeah. There's not the, the rush for crews no yeah. more. You know I mean? And it's a shame because I feel like that was, because even me, I used to speak when I was younger, that was our training. Yeah. Your training was like, okay, cool, we're going to be in here for possibly two hours. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you that's just right. got to continually go back yeah. to back. That was your training. Yeah, that's right. That is kind of how we learned to, I guess, mic control, how we learned to project our voices, and also how we learned to, I guess, remember bars and even create bars. But I feel like, like you said, that element has kind of been, well, we still have some of the young ones that still do it on certain yeah, yeah, stations. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like, as a whole, just how, how, how integral that element was yeah it's no longer yeah 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 like now there's there's a lot of glamour behind it yeah, and yeah. there's a big money element so in the early days when we was on it there wasn't really the money element behind it mm. the end objective was to get rich off this mm. but while we was currently in it now everyone that's currently in it they do one video or another one and by their third they want a bentley <laughs> it's like <laughs> bam you gotta so, build you gotta like, build first like so it's true yeah but so the obviously the you know um the olders and everyone involved in it they're probably influential to a young guy at home that you know yeah. wants to rap and get involved in it but i just think you know don't lead yourself down the wrong influential path true. take your time and do what's for you and i feel like you've always made those really powerful statements because i know you said before that you were kind of sick of the um the gimmicks yeah cool and I feel like you, you've you made a lot of those powerful statements. I know before you said you were sick of the gimmicks yeah. and the overnight stars. And actually, it's kind of getting worse with what you call bedroom artists since you've made that status. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, that statement, should I say. Mm -hmm. How do you, I guess, with all that going on, still manoeuvre the way that you do? Um, because there's, there's, it's all of the same platform. So as long as I stay on that platform and keep my stuff to a high level, my fans will stay with me and keep listening. So you're not gonna, you know, if Walkers bring out a new crisp and you like cheese and onion, <laughs> you're gonna try the new crisp or listen, or you know, try it, but mm. if it don't taste good, you're not gonna buy it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if it don't taste anything in comparison to the, your normal crisp, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not gonna buy it again. So therefore, um, in that aspect, I've got nothing to worry about. So yeah. that's, how I, that's how I stay on my toes. Cool. So Prestige is the cheese and onion of bread, basically. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we worked out. 
All right, let's move forward and let's get into music and lyrics, yeah. especially. Yeah. Um, there's only one. Yeah. I like this project. Yeah. I feel like the um the mute the beats were a bit more rap or maybe even um, trap kind of like influence, but it was still authentically Prez Drill T. Type of, yeah, yeah, Prez T style and grime kind yeah. of even pace yeah. um, stylistically from yeah. you on the, in terms of your performance. Yeah. But was it, was, it your, was it your, I guess, your want to try and maybe slow this one down? Is that why you kind of changed maybe the sound of the beats? Um, I just feel that the drill and trap that's out now, when we first come into it and Garage was uh, going into grime or merging into grime, I kind of feel like the speed the music was then is the same speed of trap and drill now. Okay, yeah, I, so, could, I could agree. So I wanted to do that back then, Okay. but I never had a chance to. Yeah. I, there wasn't a platform for it. Yeah. No one was going to give it a second listen, so yeah. I had to keep it on more of a high tempo flex. Yeah. So now I can, it's time for me to exploit it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and that's the way that I see it really, yeah. yeah. Because um, grime, I can do grime all day long, but yeah. for me to change it up a bit, I think it's nice for yeah. the fans as well. And show versatility, I yeah. guess, as well. Um, I like the project. Um, personally, um, I liked uh, the way that you refer to on a couple of occasions that to spend time with your family and to sit down with your wife. And even on um, uh, Taking the Piss Part 2, yeah. Um, it kind of reminded me of the struggle that a lot of us have yeah, yeah, yeah. in this industry. Yeah. Like when we're trying to be, we're well, not even trying to, but we are as busy as we are, yeah, but right. still trying to hold down a relationship. Yeah, like, yeah. In fact, it, it really rang home with me because I've had those struggles <laughs> and those conversations. Yeah. So how important is it to, 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 how important is family and having a certified woman? Do you uh, think? Family means everything. Mm. Um, one of the main reasons why I keep striving to do better and to you know get President T to bigger places is because of my family. Um, first and foremost, I want to do them proud. Of course. So, um, but to have a woman that's a hundred percent is very important because you could be doing all this, all that. You won't always. You'll be away from home quite a lot, and they need to understand that there's a lot of things that come with the industry. You know what I mean? There's other females in the industry, you know, and stuff like that. So as long as they can keep it 100 with you and stay supporting you rather than um, um, questioning everything, um, you will go far with that female, with that relationship, whatever it is. Um. Yeah, that's true. How hard is it, how hard is it though yeah, to yeah. like, I'm speaking more of like me and you, not even like, but I mean you like how hard you know would you would you say it is to get I guess hold down a relationship in this industry because you know we're both in the same industry I'm yeah. not a music artist yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's very it's, it's it's very hard because uh, female uh, females might get jealous mm. with the attention that you're receiving mm. um, being in the media world mm. um, so yeah it's very hard but you know I would say don't let no relationship or female stop your goal mm -hmm. if the end goal is for you to be as successful as you can be because mm -hmm. um, they'll all come running back off <laughs> <laughs> I agree though 100% yeah. alright moving on on surrender you you say a statement um, where you said I remember a time when my name didn't hold no weight um, that statement to me was very powerful because I feel like it's something that people who find themselves in a position where they become in the public eye mm. they don't speak about you know we all go through ups and downs of relevance yeah, yeah, or just yeah. ups and downs in this yeah, industry yeah, yeah, yeah. in general yeah. so at the time that you I guess are reflecting on how did that feel and how did you work your way through that kind of had to keep my nose down keep quiet and keep working at what was going to get me get weight on my name mm -hmm. if you know what I mean yeah so um, for some people it takes long but I think that if you go to the right places and you keep pushing it in the right avenues, even if a certain amount of doors have been blocked on you, mm. you've got to open your own doors yeah. and go the other way. If that way's blocked and that way's blocked and that way's blocked, then I've got to go that way. 100. Do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, that's what I've done basically. And I made sure I got heard on all the stations from early. I was in touch with all the big DJs from early. And it's not about you sending a manual tune and then having a gripe with them saying, yeah, but you, you never spun my rhythm no. And it's like, <laughs> bro, well then, if you're that serious about your music, go and meet him, turn up, hand, it, hand him your song in person. True. And those were the lengths that I was willing to go to to get to where I am now, if you know what I mean. 100%. Yeah. 
and that's I think that's a very important point that you're making because I think especially younger artists like I don't mean to try I'm not trying to make this into a generational thing no, no, like, no, where no, I'm no. like oh look what they're doing look what, no, we, no, look, no. Look, look what we did yeah. but I feel like with the way that the industry is at the moment mm. it is a lot easier um, sometimes yeah, yeah, for easier. for I guess artists to, to get all of these things that so many of artists that of your generation worked so hard yeah. to get. So yeah. it's like, I feel like these stories that you're telling here are very important because it's like, this shows that actually, you know, it's not just about uploading a video on YouTube yeah. and, and I guess like getting onto Spotify play, or playlist. No. It's about actually going out there and grafting, grafting and really showing that you're passionate about your craft. I think when people see that as yeah. well, like even me talking to you now, yeah, yeah. I feel honored because I know you're a man that has put in over 15 years into this oh, yeah. because you obviously love and care about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel like the reason why sometimes we see artists come and go is because maybe they, they didn't really love or no, care no, about no, it in no. the first some, place. Uh, some man just want the girls mm. or the whip or the, I don't know what it is they want, mm. but you can see that it's not the passion for the game or they don't love the game or you know they ain't trying to change the industry in any way. When I'm trying to put a change into it, I'm trying yeah. to you know make it out. I'm trying to make this independent thing that I've been doing for years mm -hmm. the, the thing to be in. Mm. Do you feel like maybe the way that the scene has gone in some ways is to do with the hands that are now coming into it and grabbing into it? So when I say the hands, I mean like the people from outside the scene who were never really interested in it, but they see the, the, the monetizing aspect of it and yeah, they're yeah, getting yeah. their hands on it yeah, yeah. and yes. signing everybody and trying yeah. to... Is, yeah, uh, is yeah, that yeah. the reason why maybe things are going a bit... Yeah, because basically, you say for prime example, you'll have a rapper that's been hard for six years, year after year, working, working. Then you've got a guy that's been out for six days and, you know, the outside investment will come and invest money in him. Mm -hmm. And that rapper that's been out for six years is looking back and thinking, mm -hmm. what's happening? I've been doing this and that, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in that respective, that's probably why it's going a bit mm -hmm. widespread. But um, on the other side of the fence, it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm so happy that in this country we've got to the point where, you know, if you've got something to show the people or something to stage, it's there for you. 100%. You know, it's there yeah. for you. And, um, the audience is there waiting. If it's good, you'll get the, you'll just use. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? True, true, 100%. Another track, Bury Them Rough <clears throat> on The Stranger Returns. Yeah. There's a track that I could not stop listening to when I first heard that. And that's when you said, who can I trust if I can't I trust, trust myself? myself. <laughs> and like that one really like, sometimes, you know when it's like, sometimes music just strikes you in a deeper place. And the reason I say that is because I feel like, especially us as men, yeah. like we don't speak about those times when yeah. I guess we're going through things and when we feel alone yeah, yeah. or whatever it might be. So I was going to ask you, it's a bit of a deep question no, for no, you, no, but no, from cool. your perspective, like yeah. how do we learn to trust? And also how, who do you go to when you feel alone like that? Um, kind of hard to understand. But yeah, it is. You know what, if, you, if, you, if you've got a good woman around you or you know, if you're a female and you've got a good man around you, a good partner, full stop, you know, you should go to them and they should mm. be the one that you should turn to and they should be the one that you can tell anything to. Mm. And they'll give you the, the right advice based on unconditional love for you. Um, but in this industry as a whole, you can really only trust the ones that are there for you, mm. not for what they can gain out of it or success, they're just there for you. And that's, that's how I deal with it in my own. And um, um, I'll give anyone my um, my trust. Break it, and I'll break you. A hundred percent. Real talk. There's no so comebacks, I, man. I feel that I, I, I used to be surrounded by a lot of people that were like, "Oh no, I can't trust him. Can't trust yeah. them. Can't trust them." Can't. Then you're never gonna, yeah. you're never gonna find out anything. Will go nowhere, True. and you're just constantly putting barriers in front of yourself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? For opportunities to arise. So, yeah. yeah, don't ever put a barrier in front of yourself. If you feel like you can do something, try and do it. True. Do you feel like, because I, 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 I sometimes have these conversations with my friends who are from the same sort of place that I'm from, yeah. and I guess we've um, managed to, whether it be just get a job or whatever it is, kind of move out of the beginnings that we started at, which yeah. you know what the beginnings yeah. are. And I say to them sometimes, do you feel like we are like this because where we come from, there's such a lack of trust for everybody. It's like anybody could snake you. And then do you feel like that seeps into other areas of our life, even once we kind of get out of those situations, that like we have like a instant mistrust? Well, I don't know if I can trust you because I don't know you from when we were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel, yeah. That, do you feel that's what happens with us as, uh, as young men from the kind of areas that we're from? 
Uh, I think so. Yeah, it does. Mm. It does. But um, that's because any trust that has been broken or violation that's came your way, the mm. person that has done it hasn't really um, gave a monkeys about whether they go jail or not. True. If you know what I mean. True. So, but when you go into the more legal corporate mm -hmm. world they don't think like that no. because everything's been watched yep. they've lived a CCTV life yep. where they haven't got to worry about leaving the purse there or the roll you on the side mm -hmm. nick it you're going jail yeah yeah so it's two <laughs> different it's a different yeah, kind of life yeah. true yeah. That's, that's a good point mm. Mm. another thing you said was on where you're going on um on there's only one yeah you make a statement where you said greatest mic man in britain <laughs> yeah, and i was just like yeah. you set the precedent straight away yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah. And I feel like most of real Graham supporters will agree with that statement. You know, it's been 15 years since I first heard you, 11 yeah. years since you dropped the first mixtape back yeah. in my face. Yeah, yeah. Amazing achievements yeah. when you think about it. How have you managed to stay, I guess, keep staying power, so to speak? How have you managed to keep the staying power for so long? You've got to keep relevant. Mm. And as you get older, You've got to also tune into what's the young, mm -hmm. what are the younger lot on, or what the, do you know what I mean? And if you're in the same world, there is no age group. True. You have to kind of keep it that. So from 18 to 38, there's no age group. True. I'm nowhere near 38, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but from 18 to that, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's the way I've kept it in my brain, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I haven't ever uh, uh, lost touch. Mm -hmm. Like a president or a prime minister, sometimes they lose touch with what's going on. Mm -hmm in the country not me yeah. not me at and all. that's why it's pres tea, not president tea no more no 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 it's president tea. i <laughs> oh, prefer it to be called president tea. okay yeah, cool. yeah. Um, pres tea, i'm trying to filter out okay cool because um that's just anything pres tea. yeah like some rave mc like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right yeah. cool and um moving forward uh i know that one of your more current um favorite rappers yeah. you said was 21 savage you like the way that he was doing his thing yeah, yeah yeah um what was it about 21 savage and have you heard his new album yet um i believe bits of it have been played in my car okay okay but apart from that no okay um what i will do now yeah, yeah, you yeah. mentioned it but um his whole style with the way he put his whole body of work together yeah yeah so sometimes it's not about we're not living in an era now where it's about the bars i wish it was about the skill in the bars mm -hmm. and like man like cassidy would be number one true if you know what i'm saying yeah. if it was about that but mm -hmm. now it's about how are you put in your body of work together and how are you putting your message across mm -hmm. and if i like the sound of how it's been put across and i like the look of how you put it together mm -hmm. 10 Thumbs out of 10 up. from me yeah Straight. 10 out of 10 from me because everyone's story is different really. true and kill off Kali, the album, um, is it something we can still look forward to? Is it something that you have a date for? How's it looking? It's looking like it's about two months away. Okay. Um, on a real, um, I want it to be the biggest album I've done yet. Wicked. Um, the name might change up until then. Okay, cool. So kill off Kali is to set the precedence for what it's going to be, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, it's going to be a 20 track album as well. Wow. So it's not a 10 track album. Wow, wow, wow. I'm trying to do some Chris Brown numbers. <laughs> So he's yeah. like 50, he had yeah, like 50 yeah. tracks on there. 20 track album because I feel like the fans don't really get enough nowadays. True. Um, and so, you know, you're just a flyby now. Mm. If you're not careful, you'll become a flyby where they listen to your music for a week or two and then move on to the next. And it's just so much music's coming out. Mm. I feel like they need more to last them longer. Mm. Yeah. I, I appreciate that, man. We look forward to it. But before we end, what I want to do is, yeah, I like playing games, yeah. So what I did, I made this game called You Better Recognise. Yeah. The bigger than the game bars edition, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or bigger than the bars edition. Bigger than the bars, yeah. And the reason why I say that is because I have taken a set, one of my favourite sets that you were on. Yeah. Um, actually, it was I think it was fourteen years ago on Logan Sama's Kiss One Hundred. Fourteen um, years ago. Show you back to back with Frisco and Skepta, yeah. 14 years ago and everyone's yeah. doing this 10 year challenge <laughs> that's why i don't even get involved yeah. in that <laughs> this is the challenge yeah. bro <laughs> it's been a long time and the reason and what i did is I, I couldn't play the whole set but what i've done i've cut just a few of your bits so okay the only mc that we can really okay. hear is you okay but that's that's all right for us anyway yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. that's all right i want to see how many of these bars you recognize and remember and how many you can sing along with okay now i i think i possibly know nearly everything okay yeah but that's because yeah. i'm a fan okay. i don't know if you're a fan of your own music yeah. are you a fan okay. of your own um, music half a fan of mine <laughs> <laughs> all right you probably remember it. Press that silver button on that 
Thing about Prez, always reload king, you know. Always two words reload. Mad, <laughs> mad. Now we're literally 24 around the clock, and I've got a part of clock. And that spray, man. You'll be a laughing stock, you're out of shock. That'd be the biggest shock. I'm playing with you. And the food that I'm moving It's ease You must be smoking the trees Cause I'm on a 12 month ban I'm still holding the keys I know guys overseas That I'll come through quickly Spray man and then breeze And when you care about youngsters Let alone old APs Nobody move Everybody freeze I know guys from France And fresh off the lorry Chinese That'll come through Yo <laughs> Bad 14 Locally. 14 years ago I'm not finished yet Watch it now Pick it in the game okay. MC guys Wanna be big in the game Get a two to the signal in the game. Enough grades get digging in the game, and even his pirate station rig could get in the game. I must be taking a piss. Scores and peas. Rocking in the game. Press T book. Glocking in the game. US. Yeah. Mad. And to the slight interest. He's got his eyes on a new tight S, but his mom's head is filling with a bag of stress. What an outrageous mess. I suggest you settle for a bag of S, cause all that swag I'm seeing didn't impress. I can't believe he has come back into my face. If ever told you the case, you say, President. Why to his face? A little bit of beef. He wants to go put a mat to his face, but if ever showed you his dump of a place, it's so messy he wouldn't share inch of space. Come on. That was bars before man had bars, though. You know what I'm saying? That was bad. I didn't mean to play no more. Boss. I don't need to play no more. Prez, you did well, bro. Like I, I, I would say maybe 95% of those bars you remembered line for line. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man. 14 yeah, yeah, years yeah, course, old. Man, the memory's yeah, good, bro. Course, yeah, the memory's yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Listen, an honor, bro. Cause like even that kind of set there. I remember sitting down with my friends, like being a teenager, listening to that, and just being like, yo, these men are sick. And also, I've always been a. I've always understood President T. I think some people slept on you early, but I've always understood it. I can see the talent. So just yeah, for yeah, you yeah. coming and joining me today yeah, to speak to me, I truly appreciate yeah, it. I think you're a legend. I wish Respect, you nothing man. but success and everything in the future, bro. Respect, appreciate Thank it, you man. for joining me, bro. Appreciate yeah, it, love. Same, you know what it is? It's Roach Real Talk. Hashtag Roach Real Talk. Presidency. Make sure you look out for the album. Hopefully you're coming at some point, 2019, mid-2019. And it's always about real talk, mature conversations. Love. Became a leader, don't try to school me. Came in like your guys, I chased it out. Nobody knew me. Uh -huh.